everybody, I'm Kristen Hostetter. Welcome to another episode of First Look. My guest today is Nathan Dopp. He is the CEO Americas for Fjall Raven and the VP of Phoenix Global, which is the parent company. Hey, Nathan, how are you today? Great. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to, to speak with you here. Thanks for making time. Nathan, I know you're excited to talk about your latest pack, which is the tree kankin. Did I say that right? The kankin? It depends on where you're from. K- kankin <laughs> kankin's kind of Western. Konkin is kind of Eastern. And then uh, the Swedes, of course, have a completely different pronunciation. Okay, the tree conkin, I'll start with that. Um, but before we get into the specifics of that pack, can you tell me a little bit about um, the original conkin? Because it's, it's somewhat of a phenomenon, this, this simple little pack, this little satchel, it's kind of a phenomenon, isn't it? Yeah, we love it. It's, I mean, it's, what, a, what a great product. Um, from 1978, so the founder, Orke, which is AKE, He's read an article about Swedish school children hurting their backs because they were carrying kind of the sling, you know, crossbody bags. And so he decided to design something that would, um, you know, make that better and, and facilitate that. And of course, incorporated a lot of Swedish design to it. And so it's, it's been around over 40 years and um, always been a piece of our line. Never, you know, the number one product, but it's always a top five product for us. And um, of course, it's, it's a great door opener, um, both from an account standard and from a, from a country standard. It's always the first product we launch. It's always the, you know, the first thing to really take off in any country. And it's, it's a privilege to have something like that in any brand. So it's really nice. And, and it comes in literally like dozens and dozens of colors. And I've yep. been in, in Fjall Raven shops and seen the walls yep. of all the different colors. It just kind of makes for this great merchandising piece as well. Right. It's, it's a kaleidoscope for sure. Yeah. It's um, I think last time I counted, there were like 48 colors and I think there's eight, different versions of, you know, sizes and, you know, different, uh, you know, applications of it. But um, the classic is kind of the, the one, you know, that's, that's the one that started in New York for us. And now it's kind of migrated across the country and, and North America. And now we're moving into South America with it as well. Very cool. And so the tree conkin, that's the new yeah. one that we're talking about this year. Let's dive into that a little bit. I have, I have it here. I have one here that you are oh. nice enough to send me. Yeah. Is this thing really made of trees? It is actually made of trees. It's a pine weed. So, um, you know, it's, it's a, as far as I know, maybe the third or fourth attempt we've made to make our number one product um, sustainable, you know, and uh, make it more sustainable. We, we've, we've used rewool in the past. We've done some uh, spin dyed uh, recycled polyesters and, and this is our next attempt. So um, just, you know, I think it's important to test new technology and, and see where we can take this thing. And obviously because it's our, uh, such a big product for us, it's, it's important, you know, you, you put it into something like that and you know you'll get attention and you know people will try it out and you know, we'll all learn something from it. So it's, it's pretty, pretty uh, awesome, we're excited. Well, this fabric is really interesting too because if you didn't tell me that it was made of trees, I would have thought it was just a regular yeah. synthetic uh, nylon Cordura fabric. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's uh, Swedish trees and of course Sweden has some, some pretty strict uh, policies around that. So every tree we take um, through sustainable forests has to be replaced with at least two trees. And one tree produces about 175 bags and they actually weave the material into this, you know, in this poly feeling material. And it's been tested extensively. It, it, the fabric sat on a roof in, in Taiwan at the factory for, you know, over two years while they saw what UV and, you know, the weather did to it. So um, we think it's gonna be a great addition to the family. So you mentioned a few minutes ago um, something that I've heard you talk about before, and it's sort of this unique Swedish design ethos. Yeah. Can you describe that a little bit more? Yeah, I think I think everyone sort of everyone kind of knows what Swedish design is without being able to put their finger on it. If if I'm describing it, it's that clean lines. It's you know simplistic, only by necessity kind of look and feel. Um, and then I think in the last, you know, 40 or 50 years, it's also meant to a great deal of sustainability. And for us, that's repairability. So in every design, we want to be able to, you know, make sure you can get in there and place a zipper or a button if you, if you need to use materials and, you know, craft it in a way that, that it, it wears well. And so that's, you know, I think that's, that's kind of what's come into it. And certainly in our, in our product line, that's what Swedish design means. And why do you think Swedish design resonates with so many people, even people that have never been to Sweden or don't know much about Sweden? I think it's the, it's the cleanliness, you know, it's, 
it's a Volvo, it's Ikea, it's, you know, and it's, and it's Fjallraven, you know, everything is, um, it has a just kind of a clean, beautiful aesthetic. And particularly with the Konkin, it allows you to really personalize it. You know, I think that's one of our favorite things about the bag is, um, you know, people buy it and then they, they put their own snaps and buttons and, you know, embroideries and paint or whatever it is on there. And so it's a canvas, you know, so you can buy, you can buy the color as an expression of yourself and then you can personalize it. And I think that's what Swedish design kind of gives you is that, that ability to make it your own. Well, I've been a fan of Fjall Raven products for, for a long time because kind of, you know, along the lines that you were describing about Swedish design, there, there is something really timeless and durable about every Fjall Raven product that I've tried. You know, so many companies are, are always chasing ounces, right? Trying to shave weight off of their products and, and shouting about that weight savings from the rooftop. But, but Fjallraven really has never been too concerned about ounce, ounce counting. Is that, is that, would you agree with that? <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, very true. We, we had a phrase that we were using a few years ago that, that lightweight is not enough. And I think, you know, I've, I've come from a lot of brands that are they're very tech savvy and very... Um, into the latest technology. And, and I think that's fantastic. And I love seeing the new products at a trade show. But for us, it's really about that long term durability. You know, we, we, by not using the latest trend color, and by not changing the design and changing the fabrics all the time, it allows us to make that that pair of pants or that jacket just as timeless in 10 years as it was when you bought it, you know, and so you pull it out of your closet, and you're still effectively, you know, on fashion, although we don't use fashion as a, as a statement. You know, so I think it just keeps it very timeless. Yeah, which is really important, too, when you talk about sustainability, right? I mean, we uh, we had a story in this in this recent issue of the magazine that that's about we called it um, stuff, a cake stuff, of stuff. It's hard to say. Stuffification. Stuffification, yes. Right. Yeah. And it's, this, you know, it's this um, this this need to keep producing new SKUs and new models and new colors and always have something new to talk about, which which is really kind of contrary to a lot of our sustainability goals, right? And, and you kind of really, you know, plant your stake in the ground and, and you know, in terms of colors and design yeah. and things like that. And not, you know, it's interesting what you said about not chasing that. I, I think durability is, is, a, is a fashion statement now, you know, and I, I think that uh, ourselves and, and other brands are really starting to come into that. You know, it, it is it is wasteful to get a new jacket every year just because it's the new color. And we want to be part of that, that movement that says there are plenty of consumers in the world. And if we can offer them a, a jacket or a pant or a backpack that lasts for 10 years and only becomes kind of more charming in, in the wear, or you can go into the store and you can repair it, you know, multiple times. I've seen pants in our Boulder store that, you know, are in for the third, fourth, fifth time, you know, fixing a this or a that, and people will not give them up because it's, it's kind of become part of their, you know, their wardrobe family, you know, and they and they want to keep that. They have a lot of good memories in those things. That shirt you're wearing right now yeah. is a really good example of that, right? Like, is that is that a Fjall Raven shirt? It is. It, it is. Better, right? Yeah, I was gonna say I wouldn't get caught without <laughs> it, right? So, but I mean, that's another product. We, I think, I last time I looked, seven of our top ten products are more than fifteen years old. You know, so we have so many products that come into the line, and then they just kind of maintain a space and. All we have to do is just keep introducing new consumers to them and, and that's okay. You know, I think that's a, that's a different kind of position to be in and that's where we want to be. What's your, what's your take on natural fibers versus synthetic fibers, like in general as a brand? As, as a brand for myself personally, we believe strongly in them. I think that, um, you know, the, the problems of plastic and plastic in the oceans and, and the recyclability and the, and, and things are, that's real. And um, you know, I think we work very hard to focus on the natural fibers. So whether it's organic cotton in our, in our materials or recycled plastic when you need it. Um, we have a whole wool initiative around traceable wool. Um, we even started our own wool farm in, in Sweden. So um, we started a farm and, and we learned a lot from that. And then we stumbled across a, 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 um, a warehouse full of unused wool that was going to be burned and incinerated because it wasn't of high value. And we turned that into insulation. So every opportunity we get to take a natural fiber and, and put it back into product. I think that's just a nice way to go. And it's a very sustainable way to go. And, and we believe in the animal products. Our, our down is all sustainable and traceable wool, you know, so it's, it's a, it's a big piece of where we stand and, and where we see the future. You brought up plastic 
And I wanted to, um, to ask you about plastic specifically. In, in early 2019, um, you might recall, we founded the Plastic Impact Alliance, which was a coalition of brands and companies looking to eliminate single-use plastic yep. from the business. Um, we currently have more than 380 companies, if you can believe that, who have joined. Um, and it started as a way to nix plastic from uh, the outdoor retailer show to stop mm -hmm. handing out plastic cups and plastic water bottles at the show. It's evolved into much more than that. And um, lately, we've, we've been looking really closely at packaging and poly bags. Um, is it safe to say that Fjall Raven has has looked um, looked at their packaging? Have you guys taken a hard look at your packaging? Because yeah. I noticed yeah. that um, the 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 conk and pack that I got came with uh, a a cardboard, a paper hang tag, and a natural fiber um, string on it. So there's yeah. no little plastic doohickey attaching the hang tag. What's what's your take on packaging? Yeah. Even even the inside tags are all recycled um, poly, um, but on the on the packaging in the shipping, which I, I think is is something we're all really interested in exploring. We're in the process of delivering our first Konkins without plastic wrapping, and we're looking for ways to do that so that it's the product arrives first class, of course, but also working with our partners because that's obviously a supply chain issue, and it's it's one thing for us to want to do something, but of course the people taking receipt will have to be on board as well. And so we're trying to educate them and, and make them feel comfortable that this will be a good process. And so we expect by next year, we'll, we'll be able to roll that out more extensively with more products. Okay, Nathan, um, talk to me about this sort of slogan or motto that, uh, that I've heard uh, you folks at Fjall even use quite a bit, long life, less waste. Yeah, that's sort of our, um, that's what we call our durability position, you know, and it, it kind of encompasses everything from the way we design our product, the materials we use, um, the repairability, you know, our commitment to tailors in the shops where you can go and get your pants fitted or repaired. Um, and so we use that and you'll be seeing a lot of that from us and it's, it's really where we stand. You know, we think that, that the best product are those that you can form a relationship with and they can have a long life and, and be a part of your wardrobe for a long time. Well, thank you so much for making time to speak with us today, Nathan. It was great talking with you. Great to see you and speak to you as always. Thank you. And thank you everybody for tuning into this episode of First Look. We've got lots more conversations like this on our website. So check us out there.